So tonight we're going to demystify organizing and finding our food storage because I th- it's so easy to get all of our food storage in comparison to knowing what we have and knowing where it's located. So we're going to demystify all of that for you tonight. And hopefully when we are done, you will have a better sense of how to figure out what you have, where it is, and how much of it you have. If you're a prepper, you have at least two pantries. You have your daily pantry and you have your prepper pantry. And tonight we're going to be mostly be focusing on that prepper pantry. Okay, your prepper pantry has two parts. If you've heard me teach about this or if you've read my book, you know that I break your food for preparedness down into two types, short-term food storage and long-term food storage. Short-term food storage by definition is going to be for about up to 18 months. And long-term food storage will generally last you between 20 and 30 years if it is stored properly. So we're gonna talk about those two types of food storage tonight. Your short-term food storage items are gonna be things like your canned items, your dried items, Honestly, long-term food storage items that you don't store properly actually fall into this category as well. So let's say that you have rolled oats, but you left them in that cylinder that they come in, that big cylinder that's about yay big around. If you leave it in that, it's only going to be good for a maximum of 18 months. So even though rolled oats are long-term food storage, if they're stored properly in mylar with oxygen absorbers, They are short-term food storage. That's something to keep in mind. Also, other short-term food storage items are like fats, nuts, prepackaged items like brownie mixes, cake mixes, bread mixes, rice mixes, pasta mixes, and even cereals. There are some people who will store Cheerios and it's packaged in Mylar and it's got the oxygen absorber. So I've even seen a company that has sold those So that can be long-term food storage if it is packaged properly, but most times for our purposes, that's going to be short-term food storage. So how do you store your short-term food storage? Do you have a dedicated space in a basement or in a dedicated room for that? If you do, that is so awesome and be thankful because not everybody has that. But if you don't despair, because we're going to share plenty of ideas tonight for places for you to stash your stored food. So for canned goods, I like to organize my cans by type. So when I am organizing them in different places in my home, I will organize them by type. So I know maybe vegetables are under my bed and maybe the canned meat is in a closet, but I keep them together. So I know that if I'm looking for my vegetables, I know where to go. And I know if I'm looking for my meat, I know where to go. You have the canned goods organized by type, FIFOs. It stands for first in, first out. So you're going to see two types of FIFOs on this slide. You're going to see the big one, and that's through Thrive Life. And I have, I think, four of those. And it fits everything from a regular size can at the top to what they call pantry cans in the middle to your number 10 cans at the bottom. And so you've got all those different types Thrive Life is the one that sells the pantry cans, but you could also use that section to do something like the big, the not the number 10 size cans of beans, but I've seen them like the 30 ounce cans of beans. So that is a possibility there. And then the smaller rack on the left is actually one that you can get from amazon.com. And don't let the rack size fool you. It actually holds 54 cans. That's a good amount of cans to fit on a rack, something like that. And... If you follow some tips, I'm going to show you some neat places you can put those racks. How do you store and rotate your short-term food storage unit? First in, first out means I put it in the top, it rolls to the back, and I am always using the oldest because I take that from the front. You put the newest in the top, it rolls down, and you're taking the oldest from the front. But if you don't have that, how can you? So when I did not have these FIFO units, I purchased my canned goods in flats. So I mark the month and the year on the top of each can when I get home. So when I bring my flats home, I pull out a Sharpie and I write eight of 23 
or nine of 23. And that way I know the month and the year. And then when I, then I store flats on the shelf, the bottom flat is the newest flat and the oldest flat is on top. Yes, that does mean if you get a new flat of beans that you're going to move all of your other ones down. If you have three other flats there, you're going to move them to the side. You're going to put that newest one on the bottom and put the others back on top. But that way, you know, you're always taking from the oldest flat. And if you're ever in question, those dates on the top should absolutely help you. So if I'm buying prepackaged foods, I label the top of the box with the month and the year. And I prefer to purchase items that are used for short-term food storage, again, in flats. Even though it's a boxed item, whether it's cereal or whether it is boxes of rice, that's another one that I've purchased boxed items for that are meant for short-term food storage. So when I do that, I purchase them in flats because it's easier to keep it all together. Because these are taller and last longer, I usually only have one or two flats total of that type of item. And then I'll replace a row of flats at a time. So once I have two boxes of flats or two flats and I use one row of that flat, I move everything over and then I will buy one more row and that'll go in the end. Again, the newest items are in the back and the oldest items are in the front. All right, but sometimes our short-term food storage doesn't just come in boxes and it doesn't just come in cans. There are bags. I will buy bags of pasta bags. Those are a part of my short-term food storage. Another item that we do purchase for short-term food storage is chips. We often have chili and we like to have Fritos, corn chips, or when we have what we call tortilla soup, we like to have tortilla chips. So I'll purchase those. And again, it's not in a box and it's not in a can. So they're harder to deal with. If your bags come in a case like the one that you see on the slide, purchase enough to fill the case. So buy one case full because then you know what you have in there. If you don't have that option of using a box like that, that the food comes in, then use a smaller box. Like you'll see a box on the bottom left of the screen those can be purchased from Amazon and they come in tons of different sizes. I think it was like, I was looking, you can get like 50 of them for $46. Now I know that still it's $46, but the, think of how many you're getting. And you can have different sizes of these. So you can have some for your tortilla chips, some for your Fritos, some for your, if you have rice packets, like the flavored rice packets that come in a pouch, those can all go in there as well. And you don't have to purchase 46 of them. You can purchase them in smaller quantities so you have what you need. But that's a way to keep everything in place. And with something like that, you're also going to be able to keep them in sequential order so that you're not worrying which one's actually in front. Because sometimes with tortilla chips or with Fritos, it's harder to know which one is in the front, which one did I purchase first, unless I'm using the whole flat the whole box and have another box that I have behind it. These are also harder to label with dates. So if you look in the middle on the bottom, you'll see these little round stickers. And I have used these for so many things, but this also works really, really well for your food storage. Because what you can do is if you see the, the fusilli, you can take and put one sticker, like a pink sticker on it and write your 923 and then everything that you purchased in 9 of 23 simply gets that colored sticker. You don't have to write on it. But that way you know when you got it because you've put that sticker on the box that says 923. That way when you replace some, let's say in three months and it's 1223, you put a different colored sticker on the front of the box and say the ones with that are from 1223. And everything you bought then, you put that colored sticker on. Because on packages like that, you're not going to be able to write on it in Sharpie and know that it's not going to come off. So stickers are a great option. And I think that package of stickers was like $15 and there's like over a thousand stickers. Again, newest items to the back and the oldest items to the front when you are using these things. Okay, so potential places to store your short-term food storage. One time we moved all four kids and we had, it was a big bedroom. It was probably 
12 feet across at least. And we had two bunk beds, one on one wall, one on the other wall. So we had the girls and the boys, and we just told them that they couldn't change in the bedroom. They had to change in the bathroom. But we took the other bedroom and we turned it into a storage room. We didn't have a regular basement at that place. We had a root cellar would be a generous term for it. So this was our option was moving four kids into one room, using the other room as our pantry. But if you don't have that option, which not everybody does, make sure that you start small. When we first started buying food storage, actually I started couponing is how all of this started for me. I went to a website called Money Saving Mom. I learned how to coupon and I started feeding my family on $200 a month and we were stocking our short-term pantry on that $200 a month. When we started doing all of this, we started in one, we had a lone two-door cabinet out in our garage, but I started with my canned goods in that one two-door cabinet. And then from there, I had a rack right outside of our door from the house into the garage. So I started with that. And then from there, I expanded and I ended up using our closet, our master closet was a walk-in closet and it had the floor to ceiling section, but then it had two sections that were L-shaped that had racks. So you had a rack on the top and then you had hangers where you could hang things and then there was a space and then there was a rack where you could hang things in front of it and then a space. And so I started putting stuff in our closet. So it was toothpaste and toothbrushes, mouthwash and floss, but I just kept growing my space. I started with, with what I had and I kept going. So that's what you need to do if you're just getting started with food storage and you're trying to find places, don't panic. Don't feel like you have to have that room up front. Start where you are and grow. One great idea that I heard from Fly Lady back in the day, probably, oh goodness, 20 years ago now, I used to follow Fly Lady. And Fly Lady had someone who wrote a book called Saving Dinner. And one of the suggestions that she made in her book was taking your linen closet and repurposing it for a pantry. And what she suggested was taking all of the towels out of there, putting a hanging towel rack on the back of your bathroom door, and everybody would have a different colored towel and different colored washcloths so you'd know whose was whose, but that's where you would hang it. And then you could take and repurpose that space in your linen closet for food. Another option is to purchase risers for your bed. Now those FIFOs that I showed you back here, the ones, the white FIFOs, those will fit under our bed. So between the space that we have naturally under our bed and we got six inch risers, we have enough room to put those FIFOs and we can put five of those on each side. And so when you're doing the math, I can fit 540 cans under my queen size bed. That's not a bad deal. And even under a twin bed, you can fit eight FIFOs and that gives you 432 cans from both sides of a twin bed. So there are places and there is room. You just have to figure out how to get creative with the space that you have. So also, if you don't have that dedicated area for your short-term food storage, remember keeping your like items together, like veggies may go under a bed, fruit may go in another room, meat should all be together, your dairy should all be together. Another suggestion is I have six baskets that fit under my coffee table. I love it, it's beautiful, and it's so utilitarian. I can fit 36 cans in each basket, and that, so think of six times 36, that's gonna give me another 200 plus cans that I can put in those. And you can, so if you have meats where you don't have as many cans of it, you can put them there. The bottom of a closet is another great space to store items. I have for probably 10 to 15 years, put a small bookcase in the bottom of, sometimes multiple small bookcases in the bottom of a closet. And then I use those bookcases to store items on so I get so much more space out of my closet. Also, you could put a short bookcase between your couch and the wall and use it as a couch table. But 
you store food on the shelves that nobody will ever see because it's between your couch and the wall. But you have that storage area and you have that table that you can put your drinks on right behind your couch, which is a win in so many ways. So that was short-term food storage. Let's talk about long-term food storage. Long-term food storage generally is food that will last for between 20 and 30 years if stored properly. And that's the big caveat is if it's stored properly. And some of those examples are things like apple cider vinegar, dried beans, dried corn, grain alcohol, honey, powdered non-fat dried milk, milk, oats, both rolled and quick oats, pasta, potato flakes, sugar, salt, wheat berries, white rice, and vanilla. You will see on the picture on the right, those are buckets that actually my daughter and I did on a YouTube video last year showing you all how to properly store your long-term food storage. And those are some of the ones that we did. So let's talk about storing that long-term food storage. You shouldn't store that long-term food storage in any of these places. Do not store your long-term food storage in your attic. Long-term food packaged properly and stored in an attic may only last six months when it is supposed to last 30 years. So Lori is asking if Mylar isn't an option right now, would glass jars work for a small amount if we use a vacuum sealer? Yes, but uh, only for a short term time, Lori, because one of the enemies of food storage is light. And in a glass jar, you're letting all of that light in because light will degrade your food. So while it will keep the oxygen out, it's not going to keep the light out. So you need to be aware of that. It's the kind of thing where if you can't do Mylar now, then I would do it in something like that short term and plan on doing Mylar not too long down the road. You can buy Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers on Amazon for a really decent price. And I've been doing this for at least 15 to 20 years. And the price is not horrible. And buckets, now these buckets I purchased, but you can get buckets for free or cheap. If you go to a bakery and you ask for their frosting tubs, that is an option. My three kids work at Chick-fil-A and we can get their dill pickle buckets. You just have to bring them home, clean them out and get them ready to go. So though there are free and low cost options for that. So Please don't store your food in the buckets and mylar in an attic because like I say, it might only last six months because of the temperature differential. Please don't store your long-term food storage in a garage because you're going to have temperature swings and temperature swings will cause condensation on the inside, which will cause fermenting of your items, which oftentimes we hear of fermentation as a good thing, and it is, not with things that you didn't mean to be fermented, and that can cause problems with your long-term food storage. Don't store your long-term food storage in an outdoor, non-climate controlled location. Wherever you're gonna put it, you need to have it be the same temperature all year long, and you really, it, the cooler you can get it, the better, which is why most people like to store it in their basement. Also, don't put your long-term food storage in an area that experiences temperature swings. When we took occupancy of the house that we have now, we put a lot of our food storage upstairs in a closet and did not know how badly that area had temperature swings. And one day, my kids came down from the upstairs and they showed me a water bottle and it was solidly frozen. And it was in that closet. So be careful of where you're putting your food. Try not to put it in a place that's got those drastic temperature swings. Storing long-term food storage is harder to find space because the buckets are bigger. But here are some ideas. You can properly store food like buckets in a root cellar. In our current house, we do have a root cellar and that's where our buckets were for quite some time. The problem was when we pulled the buckets out, everything inside was good, but the outside was covered in mold. Not something most people wanna deal with. But if you don't have anywhere else, that is an option. The bottom of a clothes closet is another option for you. And you can fit more in there than you realize an option. When we were first getting started with food storage, we took the bed frame and the box springs away. 
and we put, I think it was like 15 buckets down so that we could put a mattress on top, but then we put over top of those buckets, we put a dust ruffle. So you couldn't tell that there were buckets underneath it. So that's a way that you can store buckets if you need to. So those are in your house, but I wanna give you two ideas outside of your house. So right now we have an agreement with someone that we know where we are using part of their basement for our food storage. It works for us. We know these people very well. We are not concerned about a relationship going bad with them. We have keys to the house. It's not an issue. So we store most of our stuff there because we don't have a ton of room at our house now. We don't have a basement. Another option, which we have used in the past, is to rent a storage unit in a climate-controlled facility. Yes, that is more expensive, and most people don't want to shell out $80 a month for a room in a climate-controlled facility. I totally get that. But if you have the money and you don't have the space yet and you know it's a short-term thing, that may be an option for you. All right, so we talked about where to store our food storage. Let's talk a little bit about finding our food storage because that is the bigger deal sometimes. So when your food is spread all over the house, it's easy to lose track of what's where and you can overpurchase. And you might think the more I have, the better. Yes, but if you can't find what you have, it's not going to do you any good. How many of us have said, oh, I can't find a pair of scissors or a specific book or a tool that you had. And so you go out and buy another one. And guess what? Lo and behold, a week later, you find whatever it was, the book, the tool, and now you have two and you've wasted money that you didn't have to spend. This is the same type of thing. We want to make sure that we know where our items are. So one of the things that you can do is use a, an app. You'll see a, a shopping list app. That's what I use for my stuff. Whether it is where my food in my house is or even things like packing the van. So I have a packing the van list on my shopping app so that like when I was getting ready to leave today, I went through the whole list on my shopping app to make sure that I had everything that I would need. So that way I'm not forgetting things. Also having something on there like leaving the house quickly app. If something were ever to happen, like we got a notice about two to three years ago saying that an anhydrous ammonia plant to just slightly to the west of us had released some anhydrous ammonia. We were to shelter in place unless we found out that we had to leave now. In a situation like that, you want to be able to have a list that walks you through everything that you would need for a short term, to leave for a short term. And some of you might think, Karen, I already have bug out bags. We already have food. Yes, but what about things like your computer that you use all the time and your phone charging cord and any notebooks that you're working on? And for me, anything that I'm using as my office, I need those things with me. I want to have that on my app. So having something like that is also really helpful. But in this case, it's great for knowing what you have and where. So on that app, it's C-O-Z-I. Awesome app. I can take and type something in and make a heading. So under my bed, I'll have the different types of cans and then I have the different types of things in the master closet. And then I might have another one that says under name child, under their bed. And that way I know where everything is because it's in the list portion of my grocery app. Uh, I create the headings and then I know what's under each one. And then I list out the items that fit that heading. If it's fruits, then I might have cubed pineapple, crushed pineapple, peaches and syrup, whatever other fruits that I have so that I know I have these types and they are all there. Another thing that you can do is you can use a spreadsheet program. You could use Google Sheets or you can use um, Microsoft Excel. Now in Microsoft Excel, I actually created a program where I put in 15 different food storage recipes and then all of the ingredients from that I put below the recipes. And if you know how to work with Excel, I basically now all I have to do at the bottom is put in how much I have and it goes through every single recipe, subtracting out how much I need. And it tells me how much I'm over or how much I need right next to it because of the way it's programmed out. So if you're using Google Sheets or Excel, the cool thing is you can use it for more than where is, where are my beans? Where are my 
my canned potatoes. So there are extra benefits if you want to take the time to program all of that up front. So putting all of this into practice, if you do not have a dedicated space for your long-term or your short-term food storage, go through your house and make a list of places. You can use our earlier suggestions um, and your own observations. Where can you stash your short-term food storage? And just list out the different places that you can do that. For each place that you want to store food in your house, make a list of what you need. If you are going to put your food under a bed and you need to purchase risers, then say, okay, in order to put my food here, I need to purchase risers. If you are talking about different types of bagged goods, you might say, okay, I need to purchase stickers. So whatever it is that you need to put your food under something, on something or in something, if it's those boxes that I showed you earlier, whatever it is, you're gonna jot down the things that you need to purchase. And then procure the items that you need in order to adequately store that short-term food storage. Once you have the items that you need in order to organize your food storage, then I want you to bring all of your food from around the house to one location, and I want you to organize it by type, meat, vegetables, sauces, dairy products, all of that type of stuff. And then redistribute it on, in, or under the items that you have procured. Also, if you're going to use a spreadsheet or an app cap where you can catalog the different items, that's when you would do that. For your long-term food storage, I want you to walk through your house looking for places in your home with a consistent temperature where you can store your long-term food storage. If you don't have enough room in your own house, I want you to brainstorm other places that you can keep your long-term food storage. Look into costs or talk to friends and, or family and discuss options for storing your food or some of your food at somebody else's house or in a climate controlled facility. So that is the class for tonight. Thank you for exploring ways to make food storage organization easier with me today. And don't forget to join us next week for Road Ready Resilience, equipping your vehicle for life's unexpected turn.